If you turn on Windows 11 one day to find yourself in a temporary profile and all of your documents and pictures etc seem to have disappeared, don't panic. I think that I have the solution for you in this video and also in terms of your documents and everything, I'm going to say don't panic because they're still on your computer. Okay, and I'm going to show you where they are first so that you can get that panic out of your way and then I'll show you the solution to the temporary profile bit. So to find your actual real files, click on File Explorer, right? Go to this PC on the left. And then on the right, you should see uh, probably local disk C, which will be your system disk, right? By default, C is generally the system disk. You're, you may have a different drive letter for your system, but 99% of the time it'll be drive C. So you're gonna double click on that. You're gonna go into the users folder and what you'll see is there'll be a public folder, right? There'll be a folder with the same name, generally, as your username, right? Your proper username. So say, if your username is Bob, there should be a Bob folder, right? Sometimes it's different because uh, if, you've, if the, user, uh, the user account was initially set up under a different name, and then the name was changed in settings, the folder name doesn't change, it stays the same. So, you know, results may vary, but you're gonna have a folder there with all your stuff in it. If you double click on that and you go into documents, desktop, downloads, you should see all your stuff, right? And then you'll have one or more of these temp folders, which is, uh, you know, the indication that you're in a temp profile. So all your files are there, but a thing that I have to mention is that if you've been in, working in a temp folder for some time, you've had this issue, you haven't found this solution, and uh, you've created important files, or somehow you've managed to discover that your some of your files are somewhere else and you've moved them into that profile, do not follow these steps until you take your important files out of temp, right? And put them either back in your standard profile folder or Put them on a USB stick or put them, make a folder in the root of C and pile everything in there, right? But do not, because it is a temp folder, it will disappear when we do these steps and you could lose any new files, right? Or, or a bunch of your old files if you've moved them from your regular profile. So with that said, okay, your files are safe. Be careful, right? Let's go toward the solution. So. You're going to click on your start button and type in reg edit. All right. And under best match, you'll find registry editor. You're going to right click on that and say run as administrator. You're going to have to probably say yes to this user account control prompt. Right. And here we are in the registry editor. Now this vertical line, you can click and drag it, right? You're going to need to drag it pretty far to the right because we're going to go deep into this structure and we need to see the ends of some of these, um, you know, tree elements here, They're the names within here. So you'll see what I mean in a moment. So having moved that over a bit to the right, you're going to click <clears throat> here where it says H key local machine. You're going to expand it by clicking the little arrow to the left. And then again for software, expand software. And then under software, you're going to expand Microsoft, right? And then we're going to scroll way down, okay? And not, not Windows, but Windows NT. We're going to expand that. Then we expand current version. And then under current version, there is this profile list, and you're going to expand that, all right? So here's the thing. The short ones... If you look at them, one of them is going to have a ref count. All right. So you look at the others, there's no ref count. Okay. So possibly about 10% of the time in my estimation, all you're going to need to do is double click on ref count, set that to zero, click OK, and essentially restart your computer. But the essentially bit is, probably better before restarting your computer to right click on your start button, go into settings, go down to Windows Update, okay? 
and check for updates. Now, my updates are paused at the moment, right? I'm not going to unpause them at this point. But uh, you should have a check for updates button, something similar, right? Even if it, Windows says Windows is completely up to date, hit the check for updates button and apply any updates that are found. The reason for this is often this kind of temp folder, temp profile bit comes into play after, you know, an update comes in and then Microsoft realizes the issue and then they put an update to the update, right? So that can happen rather quickly. So it's best to get that update so you don't have this problem again. So my recommendation before restarting, run the updates, right? So assuming that's done, you restart your computer 10% of the time, that's it, nice and simple, right? If that did not work, then you need to come back into the registry editor, make sure you open it as an administrator, right? Click open as it, run as administrator, right? And then now we're going to deal with these two longer folders, okay? Now, listen very carefully. The one, the dot .bak, that is your original profile. That's the one you want to keep. Some in, in a previous video for Windows 10, uh, I had many comments where people say, I accidentally deleted the backup, what do I do, right? What do you do? Don't do it. Like, you know, well, you can, another thing, of course, here's a, here's the thing, because we're going to, we're going to end up deleting this one, right? So you can right click and say export, right? And then, you know, give it a name like, uh, you know, backup profile, right? And then hit save and you've got a backup of it. So before you delete anything, export it so they have a backup, right? But let me show you how the backup is the main one and this one is not. So if you click on the, the .bak one, you see that the profile image path here is C users owner, right? If we look at the other one, the profile image path is C users temp. So this temp one is the one we don't want, right? So we're going to right click on the one we don't want and we're going to click on delete and say yes. That after backing it up, right? Like exporting it is pro the proper term. Now here, this one, we can't leave it as it is. We have to right click and rename it. And we're going to go to the end of the name and we're going to delete four characters, the dot, the B, the A, and the K. Don't leave the dot, right? If you leave the dot, it's going to be a problem. So now you're going to hit enter, right? So now again, restart your computer. Hopefully, that will be it. Everything will be solved. If this, these two steps do not solve the issue, then you really do have a corrupt profile. And the best thing for you to do is to really seriously back up your computer to an external drive, right? Get an external USB drive and use uh, software, say something like Drive Image XML to make an image of your whole system onto that drive right? Once you have that image in place, that'll be every single file on your computer, right? On the external drive, then you can reset Windows, reinstall Windows, do whatever you have to do to get the computer back up to a usable state. And then you can, you know, refer to that image to pull any files back. So when you're using drive image XML, for example, after making a backup, you can then go in and they have a browse button, you browse the backup, you can see all the files in the backup when you're browsing it, right? And then you can choose anything like the user folder and you can export that. So you can export that back to a folder on your, uh, you know, rebuilt computer, right? And the reason you want to use something like Drive Image XML is because it does get every single file and it's very hard to just drag and drop files from Windows over to an external drive, you know, the way you would normally do it because all these permission issues and everything come into play. And also you have to kind of cherry pick, you pick this file, pick that file, pick this folder, and you could miss something, you know, some important tax information or whatever. So if you make a system image, then you've got everything. You're not going to miss a single file. Hopefully this has helped you resolve your problem. Thanks for watching.